Hello punters and welcome back to another Saturday Racing Preview. Of course, in this video, looking at the meeting at Eagle Farm on the weekend, uh, really kicking off the start of the Queensland Carnival this weekend. Really looking forward to We've got the Group 2 Champagne start, uh, Classic for the two-year-olds, of course. Uh, we've got in race number six, race number seven, the Lexus Gunsea Classic, Group 3 for the three-year-olds. And then also in race number eight, we've got the Tab Victory Stakes, a Group 2 race there. So... Really good racing um, at Eagle Farm on the weekend. We're really looking forward to getting into it and kicking off the Queensland Carnival um, this weekend. So really looking forward to that. So we're going to get straight into race number one on the card. Um, it's at the moment up there. The It's good for track, a little bit overcast up there, but I'd suggest that we we'll, probably will be um, dealing with a good track. Um, obviously, anyone who um, comes from up in Queensland can obviously uh, leave a comment down below if there is any rain about. But at this stage, from what I've seen from... Uh, I guess the, the the weather predictions is that it should be a good, a good for tomorrow, which is great uh, for us punters. That's what we want to be working with. So looking at race number one, 1,200-meter two-year-old race, uh, look at the speed map for this one here. It's, uh, I'd suggest that probably uh, Maya Bay and Ready for Magic might push forward. The Brotherhood might be up there, and Silver Lady might boot forward from uh, barrier number one. I'd suggest they'd be the main speed factors, but I could see Maya Bay leading them up uh, from the top. Uh, looking for me, uh, look, I'm looking around the favourite here. Just has to carry six one half kilos. So a little bit of a query there. I think Ready for Magic's a little bit over the odds here. It's a horse that uh, was quite competitive in the last preparation before it's had a quick spell. It's been off the scene for about 126 days. Uh, had a nice trial leading into this race. Um, Jimmy Byrne in the saddle uh, looks a, looks mapped to get a really good run in the race. So I'd suggest it'll be. Um, in and around the finish uh, towards the end. So I think $13 is a good price about this horse. So I'm going to have it on top ahead of the favourite, Tumble Ridge, who's really been in great form and, look, has been winning with sort of big weights. I mean, you look back at its last two starts and it's been carrying 59.5 twice and 58.5 on on that 30, uh, three starts back. So this horse does know how to carry weight. The 61.5 so that little bit extra and just that little bit of a query, $2.30 is not... It uh, doesn't look to be a stack of tempo on paper. Uh, so this horse, if it does get back in the field, although its last couple of starts has been sitting midfield. So uh, we'll be interested to see where Jason Hustle takes this horse. Uh, he actually does get a two kilo claim. So this horse actually will be carrying 59 and a half. So look, looks hard to beat, but just for me, 230 is a little bit short in, in, uh, yeah, in this race for me personally. But look, uh, number three, Maya Bay for the Sears team, who are absolutely flying at the moment, training a lot of winners. So... Uh, they've got this horse that comes into this off the back of a debut win at Toowoomba. Uh, it was a nice debut win as well, led all the way, uh, managed to hold on there. It was an impressive performance. And like, the set, like I said, with the speed map, the, the field gives it up to my Bay here and uh, is able to dictate the terms and uh, he's able to kick away. He might give him something to chase. So I think 420, probably a little bit short based off its last start, but uh, I do can see that it'll probably be on speed and it'll be there for a long way. So... Uh, Dollar six is a place doesn't look too bad for me. Um, number nine, Soul Dancer is one I want to make a mention of. Uh, finished second last uh, start at the Sunshine Coast by Wolf Moon, who um, looks to be a real talent. So that was obviously uh, only well, seven days ago. So it's coming off an eight day backup into this race. So quite, um, you know, Wolf Moon looks to be a real impressive type. It won it really well on debut for Dave Van Dyke rhyming up Malay in the saddle. So. I'll take a bit of merit out of Soul Dance finishing second of that horse there. I, I think that's some good form to bring into this. So $7 looks about the right price. But look, I'm keen to play number four ready for Magic here. I think it's got a very good chance, a little bit over the odds, uh, coming into this fresh first up um, off the back of last preparation where it really did run a couple of very good races. Um, you know, didn't finish out of the top five in its three starts. So I'm going to give it a chance on top. Ahead of number one, Tumbler Bridge in for second. Sorry, Tumble Ridge. Uh, in the third, number three, Maya Bay. And in the fourth, number eight, Soul Dancer. Moving on to race number two on the program now. And uh, it's the Ascot Green Class 6 plate, over 1,400 metres. Look at the speed map for this race here. I'd say that Manius and Echo Road off the inside barriers will be prominent up on towards the speed. FOMO usually likes to try and get towards the top. You can see what first hand will do from the, that wide barrier, whether it'll press forward or drop back in behind the speed. Thy Kingdom come now. It is... Uh, Nom nominated for a race at Ramwick, so interested to see if it does go in this race here, if it goes in that Ramwick race. Uh, but look, for me, I'm pretty keen if Thy Kingdom Come does run in this race, so I'm keen, I think it's got a very good chance of winning. So 
Uh, comes off into this off the second last time at a face off. Think that's very good for him to be bringing into a race like this. So, and look, doesn't hasn't won in a little while now. Uh, has been quite a while since since it was been the winner stalls. But I think this is the right type of race uh, for him. And if uh, Jace Thompson decides to go to this race here, I think it'll be the right option. Uh, the one at, at Randwick does look a little bit more difficult for him. So. I think with Ryan Lowe in the saddle as well, fourth up, rock hard fit now. I think this horse will be quite hard to beat off. Uh, looks to get a perfect run in the race as well. So I've got it on top. If a second number 11, Tricky Gal, who obviously will come right into the equation if Thy Kingdom comes, gets scratched and goes towards that Randwick meeting. Uh, the thing this horse got a nice chance for Matt Smith, Bailey Nodoff, uh, yeah, Northoff in the, in the saddle. Jeez, that's, that's a hard one to say, isn't it? <laughs> a six last time at Oakfield Missile. I think that's... Uh, again, quite good form. I think the Sydney form stacks up pretty well in this type of race here. Uh, prior to that, beef feather real nicely at Warwick Farm on a heavy track. So, uh, look, this horse uh, is quite a consistent type of mare. She hasn't missed a top two finish. Uh, so hasn't missed a top three finish from her, uh, her eight starts. She's only missed it once. Uh, so that, for me, suggests it. And that was last start, of course, uh, in that tough race at, at Rose Hill at a benchmark 78. So she's usually up and around the money. So she's, in terms of an each way sort of value, she's $80, dollars to play. She is a good each way player. And like I said, she comes right into it for me if uh, Thy Kingdom comes, gets scratched. Uh, if a third number eight, Red Chase, who uh, has been in some good form as of late, is that one of the last two on the bounce, uh, one that last started Dooman beating Inquiry, and then prior to that beat um, Ju Juliana at the Sunshine Coast. So... Uh, two nice performances, and that last start win was not a benchmark 85. So this horse now, uh, I guess, comes, finds a pretty suitable race here once again and uh, is in form. 3 for 20, I think, is about the right price and looks to get a nice run for that barrier. So I think it'll be uh, up towards the end. Um, so I've got it in for, sec uh, in for third, sorry. And then in for fourth, uh, I've got number one, Beat the Beast, to, for who uh, I think is a bit over the odds here. It's had two good start runs leading in. It finished second behind Juliana, who, like I mentioned, the favourite, Red Chase, Beat Juliana um, last start, oh, sorry, two starts back. So uh, the form for Juliana is quite good. And then you look at it here and obviously beat the beast only just finished uh, behind Juliana last start. It was, was two lengths off, but uh, the fact it's got that, uh, the, the form around similar runners to the favourite suggests that for me it probably shouldn't be $16. Uh, don't know if it can beat the favourite, but uh, I, I still think it'd be around the, around the mark. So I think that, you know, $16 is probably a bit over the odds. Uh, and if you're... Obviously, it's a horse that probably prefers a wet or wetter track. So if we get that soft range, this horse can probably come right into things. But look, I'm pretty keen to play number 10, Thy Kingdom Come here if it runs in this race. Uh, number 11, Tricky Gallon for second. Like I said, I'll bump that up to my on-top selection if Thy Kingdom Come gets scratched. If a third, number 8, Red Chase. And if a fourth, number 1, Beat the Beast. Moving on to race number 3 on the program now. And it's the uh, Canadian Club Class 6 Handicaps. Another Class 6, this one over the 1,000 metres. Look at the speed map here, and as you could probably expect for a thousand meter dash, there's a lot of speed on. Uh, the tenor usually likes to get forward, but pretty tricky barrier. Uh, number eleven with all that speed drawn inside. But I'd say Desert Man, Stellar Power off the inside of uh, barriers two and four will probably get forward. Uh, Royal Witness usually is close enough, although last start it settled back from the speed. Uh, Archer's Paradox I think could be up there as well. So, uh, real interesting battle for the pace, and I, I think that'll really determine. Uh, who comes out on top in this race here. Um, look, I'm pretty keen on bringing home Pop here. I think this horse might be able to uh, really get, be suited off the hot tempo, be able to come into the race nicely uh, off the back of that. Has had a win first up and three placings from six goes. So uh, first up record's not too bad. Uh, I think 650 is a nice price here and uh, comes off just a, a short spell. Uh, again, Jimmy Byrne, the saddle. Like I said, just gets a perfect run of the race. Sometimes in the race like this, is what you that's all you want. You just want the right, the horse that will get the best run in the race. And I think this horse might just get it. So I've got it on top for me. Ahead of number one, Royal Witness, who uh, was, I thought it was a little bit disappointing last time behind Boom Chicka Boom, a 900 metre race. Uh, just sort of box on okay. It was looking for a little bit more of a better effort there on that occasion. So I still thought it was a, a good enough performance, but uh, probably was looking for a little bit more there. But Coming from, um, yeah, coming back here to uh, to Eagle Farm, so I probably expect a little bit bit of improvement. This horse never seen the track before, but I think it's a track that might suit uh, her quite nicely. Look, one strike has got a really good chance here, and uh, perhaps you know 
could be argued to that, that could be uh, better on the market. It did beat um, Royal Witness two starts back, so uh, this horse got a nice chance. Uh, it's definitely better on a wet track than than, than a firm track, but um, its last start performance, uh, fourth blind Papa Joe and a benchmark eighty, was a good effort. So uh, if it can keep the sort of form up that it has been showing its last three starts, I think it'll go really close as well. Good each way uh, play. And number six of ten, look, if it can get across, it'll be hard to beat. I'll, I'll really rate that form last start uh, where it beat perfect aim and it beat a horse called Stylish Saga, who I think is a smart horse, just didn't show up on that day. Uh, I think the tenor, if it can get across and dictate the terms, which looks pretty hard to do, but if it can do it, it's definitely got a good winning chance. So I've got it in for fourth. Uh, but recap the numbers for me. Look, I, I am keen on number three, bring it home pop here, who resumes into this race. Uh, number two, Sorry, number one, Royal Witness in for second, in for third, number two, one strike, and in for fourth, number six, the tenor. Moving on to race number four on the program now. It's a uh, benchmark 78 handicap, uh, 800 metres. Uh, looking at the speed map here for this race, uh, I think that um, probably, oh, look, if it'd be interesting to see uh, who runs in this race here. Uh, sorry, just... Accidentally clicked on race number one there. Oh, I'd suggest that Searing Speed and uh, So Dapper will be up towards the pace. So Jet Affair usually is close enough to the speed. Of course, the former Lloyd Cannawell horse. Uh, Dissolution and Seat of Power will all be uh, pretty close to the speed as well. Um, look, at interesting race here. Oh, oh, sorry, not the former Lloyd Cannawell horse. That, of course, uh, that horse has come across in WA, so my apologies there. But uh, look, I, I think this is a race that will sit up pretty nicely for... Uh, seen too many here. I think they're going to be uh, set a real nice tempo. This horse better come in off the back of that. It was a good win last time out at the Gold Coast in a 70 at 5. Obviously steps up a little bit in class here, but I think it's well up to the challenge. It's a horse that has been around uh, some really good form early on it's in its preparation. I mean, you looked at a beat Tatiara at Canterbury. Um, then it went to the Gold Coast, finished fourth to Pepe Le Few and finished fourth to Sophie's Gold Class. So it's been around some decent enough form lines. And I think coming into a race like this could be a real good chance. So four eighty and dollar ninety the place looks a pretty good price to me. I'll be willing to play. So I've got it on top ahead of um, number eleven. So Dapper, I think it will improve here third up. Uh, it's had two disappointing first up runs, but uh, it's interesting because it's a horse that usually likes to press forward, but so far uh, this preparation it hasn't been jumping out swiftly and been sitting only towards the back of the field. So Interesting to see if uh, if Larry Cassidy will, will take this horse forward and if they choose to go with that option there. It looks to be a bit of tempo on the race, but I th think that uh, if they want to rediscover the form that it showed last preparation, that that's what they might have to deploy. But if they can do that, I think this horse could bounce back here and uh, I guess be into the finish. So uh, I've got it in for second. Uh, in for third, number eight, Seat of Power, who I think is um, getting real close to a win here. It was a good first up performance. A nice fifth at Doombin behind Sir Barnabas. Uh, ran on okay there. I think it'll be much improved second up. It's two from two second up, so that's what you like to see. Uh, Looks get a real nice run into the race in that wide barrier as well. So I've got it in for third. And then in for fourth, uh, I'm pretty keen to go with number four, Jet Affair here. I think can uh, improve off its last start fourth at the Gold Coast. Uh, comes in this third up. Uh, I think that it'll run a nice race as well. So recap the numbers for me. I'm pretty keen to play number three, Seen Do Many. I think it's got a very good chance in this race. Uh, in for third, uh, sorry, in for second, number 11, So Dapper. In for third, uh, number eight, Seat of Power. And in for fourth, number four, Jet Affair. Moving on to race number five now, and it's the uh, final race before we hit the feature uh, races of the day. It's another benchmark 78, this one over the 1,200 metres. Look at the speed map here. I'd say Solar Star will find the lead off the inside barrier. Uh, I Dream of Green will press forward. Dazzling Red shooting for love off barriers 9 and 10, respectively. We'll be getting forward. It's Solar Saga, a bit of a tricky barrier for that horse at the outside. Usually likes to be up towards the pace. Uh, looks to be a lot of speed up drawn inside of it, especially out of those middle stores. So uh, not sure where Solar Saga will land in the run. So that that uh, the ride early and the, the decision-making there will be really critical of that horse. But... Um, Look, I'm pretty keen in this race to... Look, I was keen on Stylish Saga until it landed that outside Baron. It does concern me a little bit. So I've landed with number nine, Totally Charmed, who I thought was a, a nice win first up the Sunshine Coast. It was on a soft track. Uh, obviously, he's a horse that is well proven now on a soft track. So four starts with two wins and a placing. So if we get a rain effect going, it could, uh, really will be a good chance here. But it's also a horse that has had two wins and four placings from eight starts on a good track. So... Is a pretty consistent horse. It's only missed the placings four times from its nine, 13 starts. And uh, one of those was um, last prep. And 
uh, where it was on a heavy track and obviously wasn't tried a heavy before, so you can forgive that. Um, but look, this also usually is around the money, and I think that so eight fifty and three dollars a place is a very nice each way price about this horse. So three starts at the track for three placings as well. So uh, experience on the track, which is what you want. And uh, I just think that this horse is going to get a nice run into the race with Boris Thorne in the saddle, and I just think it's well over the odds. So eight fifty the win, three dollars a place, really good price for me. Uh, in for, in for the second, another one who I think is a bit each way value is number fourteen, Shooting for Love, who uh, was a little bit disappointing first up, finished uh, last at, out of six runners at, at the Gold Coast. But second up form is much better for this horse. So two starts, second up for two wins. So I think that this horse will improve in seven fifty and two dollars eighty. The place looks a little bit of overs. Number sixteen, stylish saga. I do want to make a mention of it because I got a high opinion of it. It was disappointing first up as a dollar sixty favorite. But like I said, we can form it. We can sort of form up those how, how strong the form line is behind the tenor who uh, won last start time, last last time out and goes around in uh, in race number. Uh, race number three. So if it runs well enough, we can sort of tie those form lines up and give Stylish Saga a bit of a push. But Barry number 14 is a bit of a concern for me. So I've got it in for third. And then uh, in for fourth, I've got number 13, Plenty, who uh, might have been, just turned a corner at one well last time out at Sunshine Coast. Came from last and powered over the top of him. That was an impressive performance. Well, it was near enough to last anyway. And uh, this horse, uh, of course, was a former Chris Wilde gallop, gallop has always had that little bit of ability and perhaps now for Sean Kendrick it might have just gotten that win now might have been able to strengthen its confidence uh, this horse and hopefully it can go on and, and win it from here so this horse also got nice each way value so uh, really a bit of race a bit of value here it'll be playing quite wide in quaddies and uh, running doubles and, and the like so number nine totally charmed is on top for me ahead of number uh, 14 shooting for love in for second in for third number 16 uh, stylish saga and for fourth i've got number 13 plenty moving on into the first feature race of the day it's race number six it's the moat shandon champagne classic for the two rolls group two race here looking at the speed map for this race i'd say that our uh, rothfire will spear out, out of barrier number two and uh, lead them up bailix will probably lead sit just in behind them isotope will, will probably sit outside of rothfire i'd suggest and the drinks cart and uh wild ruler a bit of a tricky uh barrier to navigate those two there they probably might try and settle in behind i i was keen on wild rule i'm concerned that it might land i guess uh three wide no cover from that barrier considering where i can see them leading in the speed map but i'm going to give this horse a chance because it's last start performance finished second behind makura who since come out one last weekend at uh at ramwick so the form around makura is really good um and I think it can bounce back off of that and win again. Um, I thought that was a good enough run. First up, it fin beat Encounter Bull, um, and it was obviously spelled. Had a couple of good trials leading into that first up run at Ramwick last start. Finished second to McCrewe there. It's had a tick over trial since. Um, so I think this horse got a very good chance to win here. I think $6.95 is a great uh, chance when, like I said, that the form is really good around this horse. So I've got it on top. Ahead of... Um, I have number six, Kukaracha. I thought it was just well over the odds here. Fourth last time out to Pelzer. I think that form line is going to be really good. So uh, I'm keen to see how this horse runs here. Obviously, Chris Wallace started off down Geelong here in Victoria. Then it's gone to Ramley, finished fourth there. And now it's gone up to Gold Coast, uh, up to Eagle Farm. Sorry. So this horse um, has been well-traveled, but uh, it's got a bit of ability. And I think $18 is just well over the odds here. And if they go at a fast enough tempo, this horse better come into the race nicely. Uh, number seven, Isotope, I think, does have a good chance. It's had uh, two very impressive wins in its two race uh, starts so far. We'll look to lead them up. Both of those wins were on soft surfaces, so a bit of a query on how to go on a good track. I think 230 is way too short about that horse, but um, do you can see it's been quite slick in its two race starts so far. And if a fourth, number one, Rothfire, who returns from a spell uh, last, has been re was really quite flawless last preparation. Um, was beat rolled as a dollar twenty favourite in its uh, last start before it was spelled, but prior to that had two wins at um, equaling a, a margin of nine uh, uh, nine lengths, and then look back to its first preparation at one here at Eagle Farm at, by six lengths. So it's a horse that loves Eagle Farm. So three starts here at the track for three wins, which is really what you want to see. Jimmy Burns been on it twice for two wins. So this horse got all the recipes for for uh, a good first up showing. Two dollars eighty is probably the right price and. Looking at it now, probably is a better chance than Isotope, in my opinion, but I, I, I am going to have it in for fourth. Um, look, Balix is another one who I do want to make a mention of. Uh, this is a horse that finished third 
last last start to Salsa Bill, who had had a spell. It's had two trials leading in. The two trials being quite good as well, especially its recent one. It was very sharp when it took out the trial there at Warwick Farm. It's interesting to see how it runs because it's going to get that perfect uh, spot in behind the speed. So it might just get that really good cut at the race and run into it nicely. But look, I'm pretty keen to play number two Wild Rule here. I think it's got a very good chance in this race uh, coming out of those. Uh, four lines behind uh, Akura. Uh, number six, Kukaracha in for second. In for third, I've got number seven, Isotope. In for fourth, number three, number one, Rothfire. Move on to race number seven now. It's the three-year-old Guns, Lexus Gunsea Classic over the 1,800 metres. Look at the speed map for this race here. Uh, not a whole lot of pace. So they couldn't refuse, and uh, Ballistic Boy might be towards the pace. Super Giant will either settle just in behind of them or... Be able to press forward, powering Mashani secretly like to be up there on the speed usually as well. I suggest don't wave, it won't be up on the pace, but it won't want to get too far back being on the rails there, so it'll be pressing into a prominent position, I'd suggest as well. But uh, interesting race here, and look, I'm very keen with Kanan here at the $2. Uh, looks, we know it's absolute talent. Uh, it's a horse that has really, off its last start, beat Batiga, who's since come out and won again, so in a Group 2 race, so... The, the four lines around Canaan's were very, very good. Uh, tick over trial wasn't too, too wasn't too bad at all. Has to navigate that wide barrier. So Ryan Maloney's going to have to put in a bit of a shift uh, with his ride. But uh, it's the best horse of the race. And I think quite comfortably. So I've got to have it on top of the $2. If it can just get that right run into the race, it'd be really hard to beat. So I've got it on top ahead of... Uh, they had another 14 Skyhorse, so I think another one of the Raiders here might be a good chance. This horse was very good winning at Sandown at the Hillside Track last time out. Don't know about the form around it. Um, a lot of those horses that's been in and around haven't really done too much since, but I do think this horse got a nice uh, a nice, bit, nice chance. And uh, being side by Tavistock, I think this horse will get the distance, no worries. So the step up to the 1800 from the 6800 is going to be quite suitable for this horse here. So I'm interested to see how it'll go. $9 is a good price to find out. As well, so I'll give it a chance. I've got it in for second. Uh, in for third, uh, number 15, Powering, I think can run well here. It was a six last time out, it was a bit of a disappointing performance. But prior to that, it was in good form. And um, look, it is a horse that is much better on a wet track, so we get that wet track, it comes into proceedings. But uh, I, I just again, give it a chance to bounce back here. It comes into a much stronger grade uh, here, but. Uh, the fact that it was running so well in its uh, first two runs, albeit in weaker company, one was a maiden, one was a benchmark 62, but uh, if it can return to that sort of form, I think 51 to, to 1 is just a little bit over the odds there, so I'm going to have it in for third. Uh, and then in for fourth, I'm pretty keen to go with number one, Profit, who uh, finished fourth last time out to a horse called Vanna Girl, so uh, I think that form line is going to be quite good here. Prior to that, was in terrific form, did miss the top three finish. It's only missed a top four finish uh, once... It, uh, in its um, uh, it's five uh, sorry not five runs it's one two three uh, seven runs this prep so out of the seven runs this prep only missed a placing once so that uh, only missed top four finish once which is really what you want and I think dollar seventy five is not a bad price for the place uh, but so I'm going to give this horse a good chance as well another horse that I think has a good opportunity from its barrier and it looks to get a good run in the race is Super Giant it was a good second line Vanna Girl last time out so. It's paying a bit of overs at the $8.50, considering a beat profit last time out. Profit's paying 5 bucks, so it's a horse that I'll also give a bit of a chance to. But look, open race, but I think Canaan's the one to beat. Looks to have a bit on these, so if it can sharp and perform, it'll be the one to beat at the $2. I think, obviously, very short, but uh, I think it's well justified. It's a horse that's got a stack of ability, so I've got it on top. Ahead of number 14, Skyhorse, the second for third. Number 15, Powering, like I said, just thought there was a little bit of overs. And then for fourth, uh, number one, Profit. Moving on to race number eight on the program now. It's the Tab Victory Stakes, the main race of the program. Uh, group two race over 1,200 metres. Look at the speed map here. And uh, Tambo's made, I suggest, be probably lead them up. Uh, potentially free of debt will, will be out of the barriers and up towards the speed from barrier number 14. Uh, Deep Image will be close enough, I'd suggest. Uh, Socks are gone. And Freddie Fox Trot usually likes to be towards the pace as well. So... Could be a little bit of speed here, but for a 1,200-meter race, you probably expect it. Um, look, real tough race here. I, I really did think Tambo's mate was a bit of overs here. Um, and I'm going to put it on top as well, because, I mean, this is a horse that last time out beat Deep Image, uh, beat Kementari. So a lot of the main factors in the race, uh, it beat. And, uh, look, obviously, there's a bit of a weight shift with it. Obviously, last time out, it carried 
uh, what it carry 54 now it's got to carry 57 where a lot of these get that bit of a weight swing on it but oh, I thought that was an impressive win and it, I only just managed to hold on but this is a horse that comes down to Eagle Farm a track that it runs really well at uh, looks to get a good run in the race again uh, it's a very consistent horse I think $14 and 420 the place is massive overs about this horse so I've got to give it respect and have it on top for me so I've got it on top ahead of number one Cam Atari, who this was is his great this was his main race um he was good enough last time out they didn't really come on um in that race behind Tambo's mate it was only a length off at the end he, he got through the line really well and it's quite encouraging there uh he did carry 61 kilos on occasion now he carries 58 so he gets a great weight swing on Tambo's mate but like I said he's paying five dollars two ten the place so good each way chance but he is very tough to follow, as the punters probably know by now. So he goes in for second for me. Uh, in for third, a horse that I really think has got a good chance as well, and I will also be playing each way, is number 12, Winter Bride. Now, this horse comes out of a fourth last time out in group two. Uh, that was the Tab Sapphire Stakes behind White Moss. So I think that's the elite form here. I think that's got the better form over some of these and obviously had a uh, preparation in New Zealand where it finished second to Julius in a group one. And then it finished uh, fifth to Avantage in a group one who we've seen over here in the uh, Sydney Autumn run really well and in the spring as well. So a uh, very good quality horse. This horse has got brings in different form lines, but I think that's probably they're almost as strong, if not stronger. So Winter Bride's got a very good chance here for me. If it just navigates that wide barrier and gets into a decent enough position, it'll be very hard to beat. So I've got it as a really good chance in for third. Uh, and in for fourth, I'm pretty keen to go with number... Uh, number no sorry um yeah sorry number eight Vega one who uh look as the favourite here probably rightly so finished fourth by Tambo's mate last time out carried fifty seven now carries fifty six and a half so just a slight drop in the weights but uh look I think it's got a chance so I just don't think I think four forty is probably the wrong price about Vega one uh and another horse that I did uh make want to make a mention of who I think was was disappointing first up, but it definitely has to be reconsidered a chance here. And it is um, number 10, uh, sorry, number 7, Victorum, who comes out Tambo's mate race. Was disappointing there, but is much better second up. So four starts for two wins and a placing second up. So if he can bounce back to his uh, his the form that we know he's capable of, he's definitely uh, much better than a $13 chance. But look, I'm pretty keen to go number four, Tambo's mate. Like I said, there's that big uh, shift in the weights on some of its opposition, but comes to a track that he... Really loves so uh, I I think that he can if he can lead throughout and he can uh, give him something to catch. I don't think he's good each way value for me. So I've got him on top ahead of number one Kemetari for second, in for third number twelve Winter Bride in for third. Like I said, I think it's a very good each way play as well, and I'll be playing it each way. Uh, and in for third, fourth number eight Vega one. Like I said, um, so honourable mentions I guess is number seven Victorum could run well enough. Uh, Outback Barbie, uh, I just thought that it shouldn't be a $6.50 chance. I thought it was, was okay by on Tambo's mate, ran home all right, but uh, hasn't got great second up form. So five starts second up for just the three placings. So, uh, and it's had four starts the track for no wins and no placings either. So that's a little bit concerning if you want to take $6.50 about Outback Barbie. Uh, moving on to the final race of the card, it is race number nine and it's benchmark 72 handicap. Look at the speed map here for this race. So I'd suggest that... Um, be quite a bit of pace. Shinjin and Motion Ground off the inside barriers will get forward, set the bar high off barrier number five. Should be up there as well. Uh, Amshell, uh, some of those outside horses as well, Pocho Duro and Round Mountain Gem, usually like to be up towards the pace as well. So uh, real good speed battle on here. And I think it'll set up nicely for number four, Great Keppel, who's uh, been really close to winning this preparation. It's had five starts for three, for five placings so far. Very consistent horse has uh, only missed a placing uh, twice in its career, 16 starts, but it's only won twice as well. So a little bit of a concern to take a 440 the place, but if it gets the chance today, is it, uh, sorry, tomorrow is going to be the day for it. I think it'll be, um, it gets the perfect car in the race, shouldn't have too many excuses. So like I said, with being a dollar ninety five the place and being a horse that doesn't win out of turn, I'd probably play a bit more heavily on the place. So I've got it on top. Head of number 12, Trail of Glory, who I think uh, was a good second up, second last time out behind Holdback Girl. It goes around earlier on in the program. Didn't really give it much of a chance, Holdback Girl, but if it runs well enough, we give Trail of Glory a bit more of a push, I guess. It was a much better performance by this horse last time out. However, it doesn't uh, run too well generally at Eagle Farms. Have four starts for zero wins and zero placing. So a bit of a concern there, but I've got it in for second. Uh, in for third, number 14, Zucara, I think we'll get 
be really well suited to the, the pace on in this race. It was a six last time out behind Penny Success, but prior to that, it was a good second at the Sunshine Coast. So in stronger grade here, but uh, I think that the, the, the pace on the race will be able to set it up nice for this horse here. So I'll give it a bit of a chance at the $12. And then uh, if a third number, th uh, I think number three equips over the odds here first up at the $41. Um, isn't usually a horse that fires first up, but um, it's, and it's recent trial wasn't flash either. But uh, look, uh, I just think the 41 to 1's a little bit over about this horse. I do concede that it's going to want to get a further ground, but uh, I expect it to be finishing off late. I, I think that it could just run well enough. Um, it's probably in its right, right type of grade here, but um, like I said, off barrier number four, I'm hoping that perhaps Jimmy Orman pushes forward and um, I guess gets into a prominent enough position. But uh, yeah, look, I just like to make a bit of a chance, a bit of a roughie. That's sort of what I do on here uh, occasionally, as you can probably tell already. But look, I think great Keppel on top for me. Like I said, very tough race for me in this last one. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be playing too much in this. Uh, great Keppel, the place probably looks a good bet, but. Not so much the win, I don't think. Uh, I have got it on top, though. Uh, in for second, number 12, Trail of Glory. In for second. In for third, number 14, Zucara. And in for fourth, uh, number 11, uh, sorry, number three, Equipped. Now, look at my best bets of the program at Eagle Farm. Uh, look, I'm I'm pretty keen on in race number uh, race number seven, number five, Canard, of course, in the Gunsey Classic. I think it'd be really hard to beat. So it's race number seven. Number five, Kanana's probably my best bet of the program, I has to be said. And so my other best bet will be Thy Kingdom Come if it runs in the race. Uh, if it doesn't, um, I, I still think Tricky Girl's got a good chance there. So I'll make it my next best bet if uh, Thy Kingdom Come gets scratched. So Thy Kingdom Come in race number two, which is race number 10, is my other best bet of the program. Uh, best value bets, I was very close to making this my best bet, but I think number two, Wild Ruler, has a very nice chance, especially if there stays a horse in the race. I think dollar sixty-five is, you know, pretty, pretty skinny on, on the place. But I think that if you load up a bit more heavily on the place rather than the win, you'd be able to get a good return out of it. But I think it's got a very good chance to win. Like I said, brings in that Makura form, which I think is really uh, top notch. Considering that horse came out one last week, weekend at uh, in Sydney. So I think while rule. Good, brings good enough form and it's good each way chance at, at the six dollars so it's race number six number two wild ruler and then uh, my other best each way value play uh, of the program uh, probably comes in race race number eight number four tambo's made the 14 dollars like i said i know it's going to give up a bit of weight to some of these but uh you got to take it on merit it, it what, beat them fair and square last time out only just narrowly held, held on but comes to a track and eagle farm that it relishes so I'm expecting uh, him to be right up towards the, the finish once again. So thank you for tuning in to my Eagle Farm preview. Of course, really great to have the Queensland Racing Carnival kicking off this weekend. You know, sort of fishy. I know that they've had a few good races the last couple of, couple of weeks, but this is where it really gets into the, the main stuff. We get uh, a lot of the Group 1 races coming in very shortly. Of course, the Strad break in a couple of weeks. Really looking forward to that. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be posting uh, my... Uh, preview for Flemington uh, up very shortly and my, probably my uh, my Rose Hill meeting will be later on uh, today. Uh, I've got a couple of things to do during the day so my apologies. Uh, of course do have a day job like many of you as well so I've got to go and uh, get that done. Uh, but look so apologies for the, the lateness but I hope you guys will understand. I'm trying to get them out as quickly as possible. Obviously much more difficult having three meetings um, and sorry they're at Randwick on the weekend not Rose Hill so um, my apologies there. So my round week preview will probably be uh, later on tonight. So stay tuned for that. My Flemington preview will be just after this one here. So go and check those out. Check me out on social media if you haven't already done so as well. C Lane underscore racing tips on Instagram and C Lane race tips on Facebook. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, good luck on the weekend. Hopefully you can find plenty of winners.